Hi and welcome back to Love English. Today's lesson, conditionals, mixed conditionals. So before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and sign up for notifications for when we upload new lessons. And of course, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Sabre and me, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or you can even check out our website, www.loveenglish.co.uk. Right, conditionals, mixed conditionals. Let's make this easy and learn some advanced grammar. So let's make it simple. A nice, easy example of a mixed conditional. If you hadn't subscribed to Love English, you wouldn't be watching this lesson now. So we are, of course, talking about hypothetical situations. That is a great example of mixed third and second conditional. Let's just remind ourselves of the second and third conditional. Let's break them down and understand the grammar and the context in which we use them. Second conditional refers to situations in the present or future that are hypothetical. They are unreal and they are unlikely to happen. For example, if I won the lottery, I would be very rich. Now, I would love to win the lottery, but the chances of me winning it are pretty slim. It's possible, but not probable. If I were a cat, I would sleep all day. Now, I'd love to be a cat again, but I'm not, and that's never going to happen. That is a present unreal situation. Now, with third conditional, we are referring to the past. We use it to imagine a different past situation and past result. For example, if I hadn't met Sabra, I wouldn't have started this YouTube channel. So you can see quite clearly that these situations are all hypothetical. They are unreal. But with second and third, pure second and pure third, we are referring to one specific time frame. When we start to mix these up, it gets a little bit more confusing, but as long as you think about what time period you are referring to, whether you're talking about the past mixed with the future or the past mixed with the present, then you might actually get your head around this. So let's have a look at some really nice examples of mixed conditionals. Remember, the most common forms are third and second and second and third. But rather than say third and second and second and third, why don't we think about them in terms of the time frame that they are referring to, the time period. So throughout this lesson, we're going to use a color code. Green clauses will basically represent the present unreal situation or result, essentially the second conditional. If plus subject plus past simple or subject plus would plus the infinitive verb. Red clauses will be referring to the past unreal situation or result, essentially third conditional. This could be if plus subject plus past perfect or the result subject plus would have plus past participle. Then we'll be using purple where we refer to the future unreal. So second conditional. In this case, we'll be using the structure if plus subject plus past continuous, pay attention to that, it will come up later in the lesson, plus subject would be and the ing form. So <laughs> it gets a little bit complicated here, guys. But essentially, we are slightly changing second conditional so that we are actually using an ing verb in both clauses. If plus subject plus past continuous will help us refer to the future and subject plus would be plus verb ing will actually help us refer to the future as well. We could also use be going to. So pay attention for this more complicated structure at the end. Now, my theory is the more examples I give you, the clearer it will become. And of course, make sure that you do have a go at making some of these mixed conditionals yourself, referring to your life. Make it personal. Give me some examples of a situation in the past that had a present result or a future result. Or if a situation were different now, 
How would that have affected you in the past? Wow, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's have a look at some examples. Right, quite simply, third conditional mixed with second conditional or past unreal mixed with present unreal. So, as an example, if I'd paid more attention in school and studied English, I would have better job opportunities right now. If I'd have paid attention in school and studied more English, I would have, I'd have better job opportunities right now. If she'd been born in the UK, she wouldn't need a visa. If she had been born in the UK, then she wouldn't need a visa. So I want you to complete this sentence for me down in the comments section. Imagine how your life might be different if you had been born in the UK. Comment below and share your idea. Right, sticking with past at the beginning, third conditional, but mixing it up and actually referring to the future. So remember these color codes to help you. If I'd got the job, I wouldn't be leaving tomorrow. If I'd got the job, I wouldn't be leaving tomorrow. If she hadn't wasted her money, she'd be coming with us on holiday next week. If she hadn't wasted her money, she'd be coming on holiday with us next week. If she'd signed up for the school trip, she'd be coming with us. If she'd signed up for the school trip, she'd be coming with us. So there we go. Third and second referring to actually more of a future situation that would have been different if you'd made another decision in the past or another choice. So another example for you to try and complete a conditional in this form. Remember you can use would plus be plus ing using basically the present continuous to talk about the future plan. You could also use be going to. Let's try be going to. Okay, if I hadn't spent all my money last week, I'd be going to Spain next week. If I hadn't spent all my money last week, I'd be going to Spain next week. So where would you be going if you hadn't spent all your money? Let's imagine hypothetically that you spent all your money last week on clothes, something Sabra and I are often guilty of. What would you be doing with that money in the future? Comment below and share your mixed conditional. So let's mix this up again. Let's start with the present unreal situation with a past result. Okay, bear with me, we need an example for this. If I were rich, and this is a great one, this is the one I want you to use with your own example down in the comments section. If I were rich, referring to the present situation now, it's unreal, I'm not rich, what would I have done in the past? If I were rich, I would have bought that car. If I were rich, I would have booked business class when I was flying. So thinking about your situation now, how that could have affected you in the past. Another example, if I spoke fluent Italian, I would have applied for that job. If I spoke fluent Italian, I would have applied for that job. I would have applied in the past. I don't now, it's not true. It's not the present situation that I speak fluent Italian. My Italian's pretty poor actually, but I'm thinking that if I did, if I could right now, if I could speak, if I spoke Italian, I would have applied for a job in the past. Now, just because I think it's worth mentioning, would have applied, would have, would have. Try using that very natural contraction when you speak. It is so important in English that you do contract many of these, of course, pronouns with auxiliary verbs, but also these modals with the auxiliary verb. So, would have, would have applied, would have gone, would have done, would have had. And it is not would of. It can obviously sound like that when pronounced quite quickly. And it's a grammar mistake that many native English speakers make. And if you do want to improve your pronunciation in this area, contractions with modal verbs, then click the link to my lesson above. <sighs> if I didn't have so much work to do, I would have gone to the party. If I didn't have so much work to do, 
I would have gone to the party. So there we have it. Ready for your practice? If I were rich, I would have bought, I would have done, I would have gone. What would have been different in the past if you were rich now? Right, let's think about the future and the past, starting with referring to the future in basically the second conditional, type two, the unreal future, and thinking about how this could have an effect on the past, the third past unreal conditional. Let's have a look at some examples. If I weren't going on my business trip next week, I would definitely have helped you. If I weren't going on my business trip next week, I would definitely have helped you. If my parents weren't coming to stay, I would have gone out last night and had more fun. But I've got to clean the house, it's a mess. If I weren't working next week, I definitely would have gone on holiday with you. So, many of us are indeed working next week. Think about a decision that you would have made in the past if you weren't working. So if I weren't working next week, I would have, I would have, would have, I would have, what would you have done? Would you have planned a holiday if you could? Would you have decided to do nothing and stay home and relax? If I weren't working next week, I would have, I would have gone on holiday with you. As some extra practice, check out the comments section below. I'll put an exercise for you just to get that little bit of extra practice so that you do understand conditionals perfectly. And of course, why not check out some of my conditional lessons? There's a few retro ones there and as well a more recent one looking at all the conditionals, a complete review of pure conditionals. Zero, first, second and third. That's right, there are four. Today, we have just looked at a few ways that you can mix those conditionals up and of course, the pronunciation that you also need to include. Make sure you contract those modal verbs and your pronouns with the auxiliary verb. You will sound so much more natural. Now remember, if you weren't subscribed to Love English, you wouldn't have just watched that lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye.